So I've uh, imported my spike trap, spike trap animations and my spike trap skeletal mesh into Unreal Engine. The way you import it is exactly the same as how you would bring a character into an Unreal Engine and its animations. So the first thing we need to do is right click, go up to Blueprint class, and you want to create an actor blueprint. I'm going to name mine Spike Trap. So now if we go into our actor blueprint, go up to components in the top left, and you want to create a skeletal mesh. Then go to details, down to mesh, and you want to choose your skeletal mesh, so the spike trap. I'm just going to increase the size of mine a bit. Scale it up. So now, go back up to add component and you want to create a box collision. This box collision, when you're when any character overlaps with it, is going to set off the spike trap animations. So I'm going to set it to the size where it's just above our floor here. So I'm going to use a different perspective just to so I know it's all the right size. And in the right place. about right. So now no, we need a blueprint so when a character goes over this the animations will set off. So if we go into our event graph we don't need any of these. Select your box collision, go to details on the right again, down to events and you want on component begin overlap. So we're not going to cast to any characters, we want when any character overlaps with this, it plays the animation. So if we begin overlap, you want to search for play animation. And you want play animation, skeletal mesh. And then select what animation you want to play. So mine's the activation one when the spike tracks go up. Don't check looping as we only want it to play once. And then we want a delay. So what this delay is, delay is going to do, the delay here, the delay is gonna play, it's gonna play the activation animation and it's gonna wait and then it'll give a chance for our deactivation to play. The other deactivation, sorry. Uh, the deactivation animation to play. So when the spikes return back to the first position. So you want to set the duration here for about a second. And then what we want is for another play animation. So again, play animation skeletal mesh. And then you want deactivation animation. So when any character overlaps with this box collision, it's going to play the first animation, wait a second, and it's going to play the other animation. So we compile and save. As well, what you want to check, sorry, is we select your skeletal mesh and components, go to details, scroll down to collision, you want to make sure there's no collision on the skeletal mesh, otherwise when the spikes go up, your character is going to collide with them. So, if we drag in our spike mesh and just sorry, our spike actor blueprint, drag it into position. 
So if we test it now, it plays. But what you can do is you can keep overlapping with it, and you can see it just sort of jolts a bit, the animation. We can fix this. So if we go back into our active blueprint, Alt and left click to detach, begin overlap to play animation. And then off of begin overlap, you want to search for do once. So I'll let you see which one it is, sorry. This one here. And then off of completed, attach it to play animation. So what this does is when you overlap with the box collision, it'll play the two animations, but you'll only do it once until you reset it. So you want to reset it after a certain amount of time. So for the end here, when it, after it plays the last animation, you want to search for delay. Leave it at point 0.2. And then when this is completed, so off of completed, attach it to reset. If you double click on the connection here, you can create a rare exec. And you can just see all the connections a bit better, it's just all a bit clearer. So now when you overlap with the box collision, it'll play the animation, the first animation, wait a second, play the second animation, and after the other delay, it'll reset this do once, and then you can do it all over again. So we compile and save. Just test it. You can see it's working. It's all a bit smoother now. So now we need to make sure this spike trap applies damage to your character. So if we go back into our spike trap actor, you want to go to your viewport on the top here, and we're going to create another box collision and attach it to one of the joints that we made in Maya so it moves up with the spikes when it animates. So if we go to add component, you want to search for box collision again. Remember to name it so you don't get confused which one's which. So I'm going to name mine damage. And you want to select it and then drag it onto your skeletal mesh to attach it. And then with your box collision selected, go to details, down to sockets, and then parent socket click the magnifying glass and you want to attach it to joint 2 as that's the one that moves up. So now we just need to make it the same size and same width as the spikes. So let's move it up, start to scale it up so it's the same size. So that's roughly the same size. So now we need to blueprint it so this box collision applies damage. So we go to event graph and again you want to go to details, down to events and you want on component begin overlap again. And then off of begin overlap, you want to search for a apply damage. You need to specify what actor, and we want what any act, any actor that overlaps with it. So other actor, touch it to damaged actor. And then you want to set the damage, how much uh, health you want to take off. So the damage here, so I'm going to set mine to about 10. And that's that set up.
So compile and save. So now you want to go into your character blueprint. So mine's a third person character. I've already done it, but I'll do it again. So you want to right click in the event graph in your character. And you want to search for event any damage. So I've set up my health variable here. The variable is a float. So if I left click, drag it in, you want to get health. And you want to left click, drag it in again, and you want to set health. And then if you health here, you're going to subtract, so float, subtract, float. And you want the damage to be how much it takes off. And then I'm just going to create a print string, just so I can see it's all working. I'm going to attach this here. So that's that set up. So one more thing we need to do, go back into your spike trap. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway, just so I know it's all working. So select my damage. And I'm going to go to rendering and I'm going to uncheck hidden in game, just so I can see if the box collisions is moving up with that joint. So it's taking off the health and I can see the box collision is moving up with the spikes. And in the top left, my print string's working so I can see it's taking off this health. Everything's working.